Good morning. Welcome to our liturgy. Today we celebrate Friday, the seventh week of Ordinary Time. The Mass intention is for Mr. Henry Wynn. Entrance Antiphon. O oh Lord, I trust in your merciful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. The gathering song is on page eight in the songbook. Holy, 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 page eight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. My dearest brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to, I confess, to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. James. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, because the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth, or with any other oath. But let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no, that you may not incur condemnation. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. Jesus came into the district of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds gathered around him, and as was his custom, he again taught them. The Pharisees approached him and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall, cleave, shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must put or must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning. We are close here to the end of the year. We're coming up upon summer. Who's excited for summer? Yeah, okay, we got lots. I think everyone's excited for summer, huh? Yes, indeed. Summer's a, a beautiful time of the year and, and, and a great gift. I'm, I'm happy that we have seasons. I'm happy that we have seasons here in Colorado. Um, and, uh, and we just get to enjoy different activities and we, we, have, we have more free time, we're able to to go to, to swim, we're able to enjoy. Uh, here in Colorado, we're able to be out in the mountains. And, uh, and then these are a couple months where you're away from school. You're away from school. And, um, and so it's, it's a, a beautiful time of year to grow more intentionally and to, uh, you, get to you get to learn and to, to study or you get to, to read or dedicate your, your time and energy um, towards not just schoolwork, but you're able to, to learn about things that you kind of have, maybe that you were interested in throughout the year that you didn't get a chance to read more about, or you're able to, uh, yeah, spend time with friends or, or spend more time playing uh, sports or activities. And so it's a great time of the year. And the summertime is also a very, very beautiful opportunity to grow and friendship with our Lord. And it's a very beautiful time, and because there's more free time, to, to, to pray and to grow in different habits that then help you as you come back to school the following year. So one of the things that we hear in the, uh, in the first reading today, this is from the letter of St. James, St. James, who is one of the apostles, is St. James says to us, Yet it let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. So, St. James is exhorting all of the people who he's writing this letter to, and he's exhorting us as well to be faithful to our promises and to be faithful to the commitments that we make. And why is this? Why is this? When are the different times in your life where you've made a promise. I want you to just think about that. Maybe just think about the different moments in your life where you've made a promise. Usually, what I can think of when you make a promise is it's, you, you, maybe usually it's in relationship with another person. Maybe it's one of your friends. 
and you say, I promise I will see you this weekend on Saturday or on Friday uh, for a play date or something like that, right? Or sometimes it's in, in dedication to, uh, to sports or to school. I promise that I'm going to finish my homework before, sometimes when you're talking to your parents, I promise that I fin I'm gonna finish my homework before I go and play outside or before I go and, uh, I don't know, watch uh, um, a movie or something like that, right? So there's, there's these different moments where we make promises. And when we make promises, it shows that something is important to us, right? When we're talking about the promise that we make to our friend, it shows, it shows that we're willing to, to commit a certain amount of time, a certain amount of energy to this person because they're important in our lives and we treasure their presence and we appreciate their relationship and their friendship. Now, or with, with the school, I promise I'm gonna finish my schoolwork, we're, we're valuing something that's important in life and so we're dedicating and we're committing different, again, energy and time towards that one thing, right? So a promise, a promise always springs from love. Always springs from love. And from, from, from the love that may rise up in our heart or the desire to do good or the desire to, to be committed to will the good of something, to will the good of, of becoming a better student, to will the good of becoming a better friend, uh, to will the good of becoming uh, a, a, a better athlete, right? We make different promises uh, of, of committing to, to, I don't know, when I, was, when I was growing up, one of the things that over the summer, my dad challenged me and my whole soccer team to commit to, to juggling for 25 minutes with the soccer ball where you like try to keep it off the ground, juggling for, for 20 minutes a day. And so it was one commitment that we made Right? So we, him challenged us so that we could will the good of becoming a better player. Right? So a promise springs from love. A promise springs from love. And so um, it's a beautiful way to think about the different commitments that we have. The different commitments that we have that we make and that we um, Right, and that, that even this thinking about the summer that you'll make for the summer, you're able to think about the different things that you love within your life and make commitments to those. And so this brings me back to the first thing that I mentioned at the beginning of the homily, that the summers are a beautiful time where there's more free time, where there's more space within our lives to commit to something great, to commit to something great. So my challenge for you is as we recognize that the greatest love in our life is God the Father the Almighty, the one who has bestowed every good blessing upon us in our life, and the one that when we're in relationship with him, when we continue to, to see how we are his beloved sons and daughters, that we're able to live more in freedom and live more of how he, who he has created us to be and live more as we've been designed to, to live and to be in relationship with others and to act and to live and move and have our being. So recognizing that the greatest love in our lives and within our hearts is God the Father the Almighty. I challenge each and every single one of you as you go off to the summer to make one small commitment springing from love, one small promise to God just for the summer as, a, as an expression of being a, a son or a daughter of the Father that you can spend with Him. And maybe it's just something small. Right? Maybe it's just uh, every time, um, I'm trying to think, every time you walk out the door of your house, maybe every time you walk out of the door of your house, you're going to say uh, two Hail Marys, right? Or just 
some small commitment. Maybe it's, maybe it's uh, when you wake up in the morning, maybe you're just going to read one of the Psalms. One of the Psalms. There's a whole book of Psalms, and they're just one prayer. They're the prayer of the church. They're the prayers of Jesus, and they're the prayers of, uh, that, that David wrote, the King David in the Old Testament. But whatever it is, just one of these small acts of love that you can commit to and promise to God and then see how when we make that commitment, how much our relationship and our love for him continues to flourish, continues to grow, just like a tree. So that's my invitation for you as we come to to an end of the close of, of this year. Last night, we had our graduation for all of our eighth graders. You don't see our eighth graders here anymore. And I'm almost going to call our seventh graders eighth graders, but not yet. Not yet. Not till till next week. (laughs) So, uh, but we're coming to a close of this year, and uh, it's a great opportunity as well to give thanks to God for the many different gifts that he's given you throughout this, this year and uh, to, to take a moment of gratitude for teachers and for your parents um, as we move into the summer. And so uh, this is my encouragement for you. You can choose this, whatever, whatever you'd like. Um, maybe, you, maybe you talk about it with one of your friends in class and you can do this small commitment with one of your friends to help you um, to live more faithfully to, and to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. I now invite everyone to please stand as we offer our many prayers and petitions springing from the depths of our hearts to our Heavenly Father. During the seventh week of ordinary time, we reflect on God's love and the descent of the Holy Spirit. In this trust, we turn to him with our needs and pray. For the Pope and all church leaders, especially Father Daniel, Father Micah, and Father David, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they help us understand sacred scripture and lead us on the path to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the world leaders, that they make decisions that build a world of peace and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our most precious blood community, that we may grow in the faith as we recall the sevenfold gifts of the Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the first responders and those who serve in the armed forces, that the Holy Spirit protects them as they serve others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mrs. Monona's father-in-law, that he is resting eternally in God's glorious presence, and that God will bless Mrs. Monona's family with the comfort and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those experiencing homelessness and the the neglected, that they experience God's mercy and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our world that are sick and suffering, may they receive the Holy Spirit's love, compassion, and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a graduating eighth grade class, that they may be courageous and faithful witnesses of God's love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, we thank you for giving us the gift of your mercy and love. We ask that we may respond generously as your children to this love that you have poured out into our lives. We ask this all in the powerful name of Jesus. For he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. During the preparation of the gifts, let us sing How Great Thou Art on page six.
today, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of His name. For our good and good of all of His holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Give you thanks, truly just, to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night in gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Praise Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption. We remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness that all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into the one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, Jorge, his assistant, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free, always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be Communion Antiphon. I will recount all your wonders. I rejoice in you and be glad and sing psalms to your name, O Most High. The first communion song is on page 9 in the songbook, O Sacrament Most Holy, page 9.
our second communion song is on page 11 in the songbook. Spirit and Grace, page 11. Let us pray.
grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okie dokie. Um, well, I uh, will probably, I'll see you guys around this next week, but I do want to wish everyone a, a happy almost summer um, as we come to a close to the end of the, the year. And um, just, I think, two, just two encouragements for, for all of our families. Today in the gospel, we hear uh, this, this beautiful um, reference that Jesus has back to the book of Genesis um, about uh, in the beginning, God created them male and female, and, and that um, a husband is joined to his wife, and in that, that marriage, this beautiful gift that we've received in our lives is being written into our very nature as human beings, and in written into creation, and that God has a beautiful plan uh, for marriage in our lives. And so um, I just wanted to, to offer this invitation as this gospel comes up for, for any, uh, any families or any parents who's who just who have been desiring to have their marriage blessed in the church and, and haven't had the opportunity yet to, that this summer could be a beautiful opportunity to receive that grace and to receive that gift as there's a little bit more uh, free time and as things lighten up a little bit. So I just want to, to uh, offer that invitation for anyone um, to just come and talk to, to Father Daniel and I um, if this is uh, something that uh, a next step that you'd like to take within your families. Um, and as you make a deeper commitment to our Heavenly Father. Um, and then the second uh, that goes along um, with it is, is uh, as, you, as you make these resolutions for the summer, these commitments to the summer to our Heavenly Father, um, that as a family, that, that maybe this is the summer where, where we make the decision to come to Mass every Sunday, right? To, 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 to offer this great gift to the Lord and to see how that changes everything to see how that, that transforms every week as we, as we have that moment to, to come and offer all of our lives back to the Father in this great act of worship and surrender all of the things that, that kind of cause us worry, fear, anxiety, and, and to, to give thanks to God as well for all of the gifts that he continues to bestow upon us. Uh, so I just offer those two suggestions to all of our families as we come to a close of the year and as we move into summer. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, and all Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world and are seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As we go forth, let us sing Salve Regina on page 5. Salve.